Hey brothers and sisters of the YouTube family, hope you guys are being blessed. Um, I wanted to share a message on my heart that I've been going through actually <laughs> about uh, trusting the Lord when it's crazy because God is in the crazy guys, I'm telling you, man. A lot has transpired um, since the last video or I don't say a lot, just sharing what the Lord has called me to. And I want to read a message um, that the Lord gave me on May the 4th. Um, before I just go into the message, and this is what he said. This is what he spoke to my heart. I said, Jesus, what's on your heart? And he said, well, I guess let me backtrack. So I woke up that particular day just feeling um, kind of discouraged and um, just a little bit anxious. I, I'd been praying and asking the Lord just in regards to like direction, like, Lord, oh, what's next? We don't need to do. As you guys have seen a lot of my other videos, with my unemployment just ending, like, Lord, what is your direction? What is your desire? And I just kind of wake up just feeling like, man, like, almost a, just a believe the lie that, you know, things aren't just not going to get better. It's not going to change. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. I said, Jesus, what's on your heart? He said, you are my beloved bride. How I hold you tenderly through it all, catching every tear. I'm carrying you through the threshold into your dreams. Don't listen to the lie that this is all that there is. I'm not a drabby God, but a very colorful one in all that I do and create. There are times in your life where it may look like you're stale or stuck in the gray, but that's just that brushstroke color for that season. But oh, how I'm painting a beautiful, colorful mosaic masterpiece called your life. As you surrendered to me, you gave me the permission to be the artist and having control of all of the paintbrush. Trust me, my beloved bride, you indeed will be in awe, for there's so much more to come. In excitement, I wait for you to see what I see because I'm already there. Will you trust me? Let go of all the burdens. Amen. So I was like, oh, that's so encour encouraging me that day. I was like, so it's just awesome by God's grace and his grace alone that um, I'm just, I, I believe that um, just, just just hearing him more clearly, honestly. Um, and so I'm just writing. I'm like, this so cannot be for me. This is so beautiful. This is from Jesus. So let me tell you what he was talking about. So in the midst of that, I've been praying. I'm like, Lord, what is that you want me to do? My unemployment's up. And as I begin to go before the Lord in my alone time, uh, my lease was up, as I told you guys before. My lease is up this month. And in, for sure, honestly, guys, I'm like, there's no way. God's going to have me stay here and make sense, you know. I have a small group he told me to start. You know, uh, my church is around the corner from here. Um, he has me evangelizing people across the street, building relationships. You know, um, it makes sense. I'm going to stay. I'm just going to sign my lease again. I've been praying. I was like, Lord, if you're not clear, I'm just going to renew this lease. Mind you, last year for sure, I thought that the Lord wanted me to move. I just knew it. Only because, as I said before, He speaks to me sometimes with numbers. And when I see 333, three, three, I know that's a confirmation from the Lord, just saying, Hey, Nan, I'm here. I love you. And I just remember contemplating my heart, the move. And I saw 333 three, three movers on a, a truck uh, once I was driving. And I was like, Okay, Lord, I think that you want me to move. So I'm praying and praying and asking the Lord. And I'm just not hearing nothing, guys. Just not hearing anything. It was last year. And I'm like, Lord, what's going on? I keep praying and I keep asking the Lord for rhemas. And all the rhemas I'm getting are like spiritual warfare. And I'm like, I don't see, I mean, I don't feel any oppression. I don't, I'm not dealing with anything. You know, so I'm like, it must be oppression in the spirit as to like me not hearing from God, you know? So for me, I was just gonna, um, like I said, I really thought to move. So I remember really still not getting any clarity, being frustrated at times. But I just remember the last day, I was like, you know what? Lord, you haven't given me any direction. I'm just going to renew my lease. So I remember walking into my apartment complex, and I felt such a peace that the last year just signing my lease, and I kind of knew immediately. I was like, okay, Lord, this is your will. I thank God for that because if I would have just um, up and left, you know, I wouldn't have had the small group. I wouldn't have had, you know, an opportunity to evangelize and see God move the most amazing ways. So I say this going on this um, year, renewal, I just knew the Lord is going to have me stay. So my long time, I'm praying, asking the Lord, what's your will? And I thought comes to my mind to move to Fort Worth. And that's a nearby city. And mind you, the, the job that he, the Lord told me to apply for in this time is to work at the uh, shelter in Fort Worth, too, as well. And I got a prophetic word uh, from somebody two years ago, a brother in Christ, a brother who's a prophet. And he said a lot of things will happen to you, which is a two-year deadline this year. And he's like, yeah, I see you working like um, for the um, homeless. He's like, I see you just with a lot of homeless people. You have a huge megaphone. You're hanging out clothes and different things. And I see you working for like a charity, some type of organization. You're going to start at the bottom, but the Lord's going to promote you. And I I see you doing interviews, you know, and people are asking, like, what is the secret? And, you know, just giving all glory to God. I remember when I first got that prophetic word, I was just like, really, Lord? 
I was doing fashion. I was doing, I was about to move to New York. And you call me to work for the homeless? <laughs> That's really what you call me to? And so it's so funny. I was like so not receiving that word, guys. I was almost discouraged and just like kind of put off. But it's so amazing how God knows. And he's completely churned my heart. 360 degrees that is my heart's desire right now uh, is definitely to, to reach out to those who are poor and in need and the, the homeless that's my heart and so in worship that's the lord being to speak to me he's like nana i want you to apply for this job so i looked online and sure enough there's a position available i applied for it i applied for it i didn't um i didn't um get a response so i remember thinking in my mind what well, the guy said you know the particular job i applied for was like a really high uh, program director you know at that facility and i'm just like okay but i thought in my mind i was like well lord you said it's a season that most of us going to come into when we get promoted uh, be increased to places that we don't even deserve so i'm like okay this is definitely the position for me but yet as i applied for it um i, like I said two weeks going by i'm not hearing anything so I just remember thinking, like, Lord, did I not hear you right? You know, I know for a fact you confirmed that you wanted me to apply for the job. Because after praying, I actually for a I got hearing from the Lord. And so um, I just went to prayer again. And, you know, I looked online. That position was gone. So so discouraging. And I was like, Lord, what's going on? You said this is the job for me. And yet the thought came to my mind again what that guy had said that, you're going to start off low and they're going to move up. So there's another position available working with the children's building. And I'm like, I love children, but when I looked at how much they pay, I was like, Lord, this is nothing. I don't I don't understand how I'm going to make a living off of this. Are you sure this is you? And, you know, I just threw a hissy fit in my heart. Like, I wanted the big job, the big title, Jesus. Why this job? It's only $12 an hour. Just complaining. But then I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. Fine. So I prayed about it. Too. I was like, Holy Spirit, is this you? Is this the position you want to apply for? Sure enough, I, I prayed, opened the Rhema book. What did it say? Hearing from God. I was like, okay, God. And so I applied for the job. So I applied for the job. I'm still waiting to hear back. I haven't heard anything. Fast forward, moving forward, as I began to seek the Lord, I said, Lord, do you want me to move? Do you want me to stay? I just heard my mind, I want you to move to Fort Worth. And I was just like, Maybe it's just a familiar thought because the position he wants me to apply for is in Fort Worth. Maybe that's not from you, Lord. And he went on to say, I want you to move to Fort Worth and I want you to move to low-income poverty apartments. And I was like, no, that's not from Jesus. I don't receive this the same the Lord. So I get to move in. So I'm going, please pray, Lord, show me, show me. I have like six weeks left, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Please guide me. Father, if, if it's your will for me to move, give me a dream, give me a dream. So guys, he gave me a dream. And that particular dream, of course, was a going away party. I had my parents here in the living room. I had people from my small group. Um, you know, those who I go to church with the 10, I was having like a little party. People were coming to help. The girls were coming to help move stuff out of my closet and different things like that. And I woke up and I was like, Jesus, I need another confirmation. Guys, you know how we do. I'm like, I need another confirmation, Jesus. I'm not sure if this is you. Like, this is a big deal. So I got six weeks, Lord. You want me to move to Fort Worth? That's crazy. Why? It doesn't even make sense to me. I don't even like Fort Worth. I don't want to go there. Why, Jesus? So as I continued moving forward, I was like, Lord, please confirm. So I was like, okay, Lord, if it's Fort Worth, let's send my sister to that Fort Worth. Let's just like, confirm for me that way. So I'm sitting there telling my, some of my small group members, like, hey, guys, I think that the Lord's call me, calling me to move. I'm not really sure where. And one guy just burst out. You know where I think you should move? I was like, where? He's like, no, for worth. And I was like, dang, Lord. I was like, no. So I was like, man, Jesus. I was like, nah, Lord, I need you to confirm for me again. Like, this is a big deal. Because, guys, my lease is up in six weeks. Number one, you have to put a 60-day notice for your lease. If you don't put 60 day notice, you're gonna have to pay 85% of your rent before you leave. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, Lord, this is crazy. Really, Fort Worth? And in the midst of Fort Worth, I'm like, Lord, why? Like, you just got me started here, you know? I was like, it seems crazy. Once again, I'm like, I'm not sure this is from you, God. I really need you to confirm for the needs solid. And so I just began to seek and pray, you know? And the and I remember waking up was like last week. Last week, uh, probably around like Thursday or Wednesday, I was waking up and I was just sat before him, just woke up anxious. And I had the most amazing alone time with him and I was just pouring out my heart, just a heart to prayer. And I was like, Lord, I, I'm just not understanding. Like, 
please just show me that God will hi forward and are you sure this is you and he meant to speak to me it's like Nana provisions be made ready because my first rebuttal was like but Lord you had me start the small group and the smoke was here in my apartment and it's like in the middle of our small group and you just kind of completely stop he's like Nana provision has been made ready secondly I was like Lord I mean apartment complex right now like I don't have a job I don't have income most apartments need like a pay stub Lord how am I gonna move like how he's like nana i've made provision ready and then said the tunes i was like lord what about the people across the street that build relationships with and you know who's going to minister to them and you know continue moving forward he's like nana i've made provision i've called you just so and others will reap and so at that time i'm just toiling all these thoughts and i just felt just a peace that came over me and i just knew that i knew that god's desire was for me to move and i'm just like oh my goodness what are people going to think that's the first wrong thought I shouldn't have, but I did. I was like, what are people gonna think? And second too as well, I'm like, Lord, please don't make me like Abraham. Don't make me like Abraham. Don't let me have all my stuff packed up in a car that very damn just to leave. I'm like, okay, Lord, like where to go, please. And I realized this is exactly what the Lord began to do. So that very day, he gave me that peace about it. I went out to evangelize. And as I went out to evangelize, it was amazing that I ended up meeting another young man who comes in his car. He doesn't walk out like I do. But he just sits in his car and he calls other young men into the car and just shares the gospel with them. And he doesn't even look. I mean, he's all tatted up and everything. You know, he also is like, you know, he's like the Lord began to touch his heart three months ago. And he doesn't have a TV at his house either as well like myself. And, you know, he's been seeking the Lord's face. And he just comes out here to minister to these lost young men and I'm like wow so that day we were like tag team I'm like all right tag team we're co-laboring that day and then as I'm about to leave to evangelize another young uh a ministry comes up to me uh, three ladies with ministry outreach t-shirts come up to me and hand me flyers I'm just blown away I'm like I've never seen any ministry any church ministry out here in the area where I live and so I begin to just share with them like oh my gosh I'm excited you know I've been the one out here and you know um I was telling them how I feel the Lord's calling me to move and you know um you know and they just basically like okay let's pray let's pray over this place so we prayed and one of the ladies was like you know uh, you know what I believe the Lord called you out here so and we're gonna reap and i'm just like hush jesus that's exactly what he told me that morning nana i've called you out here to sow and others will reap so in that very moment i realized that i don't labor in vain i don't labor alone and i realized a lot of times that even as believers if the lord's calling us to something like i i, I feel the holy spirit brought me back to um elijah and elijah being like lord i'm the only prophet left i'm the only prophet left that's not bowed the knee down to Baal." and that's what i thought i was like lord i'm the only one out of here you know uh um, evangelizing these people not realizing he's like no not i have other workers out here like you're one of the many and I was like wow and so she prayed over me and she's like you have an apostolic anointing upon you do you know what that is and I was like no I don't know what that is and she's like well you know the faithful ministries apostles and apostles basically establish things so the Lord sent you out here to establish this area and we will come in and reap and I was like wow God you're so so amazing and so that was just confirmation I was like you truly have provision ready the best thing of it all guys is that in that week I was like Lord financially how, how's this going to be done my unemployment ended on the 24th what God being so good is that I began to get a letter from a mail from my former employee and they kept saying they sent me a letter saying that I didn't put a beneficiary in my 401k and I remember writing my journal and I was like, 401k? I totally forgot guys had a 401k. And I'm like, Lord, huh? Do you need to cash out my 401k? I was like, let me call and see how much I have. So I called them and just, you know, to see how much I have and how it can be distributed. And guys, I was blown away. I was like, how much do I have? How much? Guys, it's like thousands of dollars that I, I don't even know. It's all by the grace of God that he reminded me that he had me to save up that much when I was just working the job for three years. I'm just like, what? I was like, hush jesus again you made provision hush so god is so faithful and i'm like i'm just blown away that you have provision ready financially for me to move you have provision ready for those you allowed me to minister to that i just was called out to sow and others will come and water and reap a harvest and you made provision my small group when i told my small group leaders they're immediately equipped and ready for the change and now we're going to transition and doing the small group at someone else's house now in regards to moving guys i have one week I still don't know where I'm going. I know that I'm in the city, but I still don't know where I'm going. And so I see that that trusting God in the crazy. I, you know, I was initially I was very I was very um, hesitant to share this with others because I'm like, you know what, Lord, I don't know what people are gonna think of me um, to live in, a, live in a poverty low income place. Let me just keep it to myself. But as I begin to share, God, I, guys, I got opposition. I got opposition. The uh, one person, uh, the testimony to share here, opposition was from my mom. 
you know, at first she was like, no, I don't think God called you to move to Fort Worth. And I'm sure you came from the Lord. I'm sure it's not the devil telling you to move. It doesn't even make sense for you to move. Why would you move to Fort Worth? And why would you move to a poverty low income place? And, you know, I began to uh, share that. And even uh, some, uh, w- I've, I've come to realize when God speaks to you and spoken to you to be obedient, you need to be obedient. A lot of times the word of the word of the Lord for you is not for everyone else. And everyone else will not understand it. And as you begin to listen to the opinions and the ideas of man that can easily deter you guys from what God has called you the perfect will of God because God is always looking for that one to say yes to say yes to look like a fool to say yes when it's crazy to say yes to him and trust that he will provide that he will make a way and so at that time I'm just like toiling with it I was going back and forth with my mom I was like mom what do you mean it's crazy you know and she began to just share like you know it doesn't and even some other um believers around me was like man are you sure you know you protect yourself you know are you sure you're gonna go into a place of darkness, a place that's, you know, that's real with drugs and infestations. Are you sure God's called you to that? And who, you know, how'd you get confirmation? Have you talked to pastors about it? Do you have a cover? All these different things, like red tape upon red tape, in order to stop doing what God has called me to do or stop obeying with the, 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 the word of the Lord. And I just remember speaking to my mother and she began to say, like, you know, well, you know, Christianity, why would God call you to a place of poverty? Why would God call you to a place where, you know, uh, people look at you like people in poverty are wanting? Wanting to get out and be successful. No, God wants you. To, God wants you to better yourself. God wants you to live the abundant life. And guys, that's. That's the perverted gospel, unfortunately. The gospel has become, come to Jesus for what you can get. When the gospel truly is saying, come to Jesus so you can die, that he may live. That's the gospel. So the gospel is saying, wherever the Lord may send you, will you say yes? Whether it looks like a sin in poverty, whether it looks in wealth, will you say yes to the Lord? And so, the, you know, I, I told her, like, if... If you see the gospel, if you see Christianity about all these materialistic things you can get, if you see the abundant life as materialistic things, then you're going to be sustained with your Christian walk with materialistic things. So as soon as those materialistic things or the things of this world are taken from you, then guess what? You lose your faith. And that's the problem. That's why so many people, especially here in America, have become so spoiled with the gospel because it's all about entitlement. It's all about coming to Jesus for what you can get rather than coming to Jesus for what you can become just like him. That's the gospel. And so it, and, and that's exactly what I was finding. It's like that's, you know, what what is it? Why 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 would that look like me suffering going to a poverty place? And that's what she kept saying. Like, God wouldn't want you to suffer. And I was like, for me, my walk with the Lord, honestly, guys, if for me nothing else has made sense is the word of God. I love the word of God. Because when I begin to look at the church, I begin to look at other believers and Christians, my life doesn't make sense. But when I match myself up to the word of God, my life makes perfect sense. That God is calling me to walk as a true disciple, laying down my life, called to a life of suffering for, and laboring for the soul's of this world, laying down my life that Christ may live. And that truly is, it is the gospel. And so we're just going back and forth, back and forth to a point of burning my heart heavy. And I'm just telling my mom, I was like, mom, you have to stop. You have to surrender me to the Lord. I know you love me. I know you're scared, but you have to surrender me to the Lord. I was sent here not only to be your daughter, but at some point as I yielded myself to the Lord, that I am his bride. I am his servant. And so at this point, I have to be obedient to him because at, when I stand before the throne room of God, you're not going to be there with me. And there's no way I'm going to point to you and say, oh, I didn't do what you asked me to do because my mother said. So let's be honest. Is there is there parents, family members in your life who have been hindering you from what God's called you to do? Are you more concerned with their opinions, their praises, than what God said? And if you are, the word of God says you have to hate your mother, your brother, your sister. And if you if you don't hate them, you're not worthy of me. And a lot of times you can see that scripture is, oh, well, why God want us to hate? No, God is saying that. No, I want you to, to the point. I want you to be so obedient to me that whatever they ask you to do, you, you despise that. And you, you are obedient to me. You are obedient to what I'm called you to do. So I had to make that decision. I just told her, look, you have to surrender me to the Lord because I'm sorry. I'm going to be obedient to what God's called me to do. And it's just so awesome how God is so faithful because I was burdened by this. Me and my mom are so close. And I was like, Lord, please give her peace. Please give her peace and begin to show her your heart and what you called me to do. And God being so faithful. This Sunday, Kristen Kane, whom I love, man, she came. I had, we had a, um, a conference at our church. 
and um, she spoke at the conference such a powerful powerful convicting that just calling believers higher calling believers to be the light into this world not to live a life of comfortability because that's exactly what Christianity has become here in America or oh, that comfortable life abundant life from materialistic things when the word of God says abundant life is his presence guys is, is walking the fruits of the spirit is having a relationship with him that's the abundant life that's what we're supposed to we're, we're called to and we're supposed to live for not materialistic gain and so uh, she was just really calling us higher and then on Sunday's message she was basically talking about being a fool for Jesus that when God calls you he calls you to be a fool for him and he's looking for those who are willing to be looking foolish to the things of this world in order to say yes to the things of God and immediately after the message was over I, I came out in the foyer and my mom just ran to me it was Mother's Day guys just Sunday ran to me and just hugged me put her arms around me and she said I'm so sorry Forgive me, forgive me for stepping the way what God wanted you to do. Forgive me for saying that you weren't hearing from God. She's like, I'm just going to encourage you, and I'm going to be behind you. If God's called you to look for a fool for him, then you do it. And I was like, Jesus, you are so amazing. Thank you, God, because it burdened me so much. And I was like, Lord, I'm tired of always defending myself. I'm always tired of defending my walk and what you called me to. I know that you didn't call me to defend me, uh, defend myself because you're going to defend me, but it give me wisdom. And he did. He did, and in the midst of me being silent and praying, asking the Lord, Lord, touch your heart, give her peace about it. He did exactly that. So I just want to encourage you right now, going back once again to Abraham, going back to Abraham, imagine like, you know, uh, Imagine how Jesus, how Jesus, when he was called, he had to leave his home, had to leave his home and do the will and the work of the Father. And Abraham too, as we go to Genesis nine, it talks about here. Um, talks about here. Uh, talks about Abraham. So Genesis nine. Okay, so just the sign says, the Lord said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, your father's household, go to the land in which I will show you. I'll make into a great nation, I'll bless you, I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haram. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions that had accumulated, the people they had acquired in Haram, they set out to the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Amen. So imagine Abraham himself. Abraham was 75 years old. And God says, at 75, I want you to leave the, your homeland and I want you to go to land in which I will show you. What I love about that, guys, somewhere between verses 1 and somewhere between verses 4, God showed him exactly the location. So with me, God has said, like, Sinana, I want you to go to Fort Worth. He hasn't told me exactly where the apartment is yet, but I'll leave from t I believe from today to next Tuesday, which is the last day, he's going to show me specifically which the land is called. As he told uh, here, Abraham, go to the land of Canaan. But initially he just said, hey, I just want you to get up and go. Leave your household and go. And I will bless you. I will bless you. Be a great nation. So I want to encourage you right now to anyone who's watching this. If you're 50, if you're 75, you have no excuse. Guys, you have no excuse. Guys, as believers, I don't know. when I, For me, this is the first time in my life, this word has become so alive to me. And this is one thing I prayed for when I came to the Lord. I was like, Lord. I read this word, I'm like, I don't see any of these signs and wonders and miracles happening in our generation. Because you know why God says that the gospel is for those who are sold out. Are you sold out for the gospel, guys? Do you want this word to become life? If you want this word to become life, you're going to have to step out into the unknown. You're going to have to step out into the uncomfortable. You're going to have to step out when it looks crazy. You're going to have to be stepped out when people call you a fool. At 75, you have no excuse. For those who want to just get their retirement and want to go to florida or live the life and just kind of die and waste away guys that's such a wasted life that's a, a waste of the precious blood of christ where he died and sacrificed himself for that you may live and that you may be enlightened to this world even at your age he's not done with you the only time you're done is when you, you have no breath left in your lungs that's when you're done and my desire is that i would die completely empty that i will still be working my hands to the plow however whenever jesus comes whether it's whether it's five years from now whether it's next year whenever it may happen or 10 years from now whatever it may happen however old i am i pray that when christ comes i pray that when i find myself facing christ that i would be working for him and just die so the point is that we you are without excuse the world has told you that you're too old that you're not worthy that you're not qualified that you're not equipped that's a life in the pits of hell if you're breathing if you're walking you're still living right now you have a plan and purpose for your life that god has destined you for will you say yes will you say yes and look like a fool for jesus christ even when it looks crazy 
Will you go into the land in which he's called, even when he cannot show you, but he said just go? Would you step out and go and know that in the midst of you going, he's going to show you specifically where the land you're supposed to go? And I love that it said, Abraham took all his possessions. Will you take all your possessions and go? And sometimes we may call you to leave those things behind. Go. And one thing, you know, the Lord has really been talking about, you know, like I said, Paul, he's been really putting that in my heart, like with Paul. And it, when that lady spoke to me about the apostolic anointing, I remember that very day, a friend of mine, I was telling her about what the lady had said, what the Lord has been speaking to me. She was encouraging me. She's like, you know what? Your walker reminds me a lot about Heidi Baker. And I was like, yeah, I've heard of her. She's like, I want you to listen to her testimony. I was blown away. Guys, I was just crying after her testimony and crying, like, God, make me into nothing. Because, you know, the Lord began to speak to her too as well. Like, you know, Heidi, she has an uh, apostolic anointing, and she said when she first heard that, she was so turned off by that because the the this this whole title of apostle has been carried in such an arrogant way in the church. Oh, I'm apostle such and such. I'm apostle this and that. I'm apostle, but and she's like, I want no part of it. And the Lord spoke to her and said, You know what? To be an apostle means to be last. That's what an apostle is. Peter, Paul. All of them, these apostles of Jesus Christ who all last, they laid down their lives. They were martyred for the name of Jesus Christ. So if you're called to have apostolic anointing, if your desire somehow in ministry to be apostle, if you are an apostle, that means you are to, you're called to be the last and the lowliest of them all. That's what an apostle means. And so as the Lord's been taking me just through Paul and teaching you through Paul, you know, I, the one thing, one Raymond he gave me was about Paul, and it says that Paul labored and suffered for souls, and he was judged and despised. And the Holy Spirit's telling me, Nana, you will be judged and despised with your walk when you follow me. You will be judged and despised. And I've heard it all. I've heard it all. And one thing, I mean, what Christian Kate said that the conference was that, you know, once you read God's word, it's like God's word just God's basically God's word. God's word is truth. God's word is desire to be no compromise. They read it and we do it. And a lot of times when I read God's word and I've done it, you know, I, I've heard statements. You know, my walks like, oh well, almost is borderline legalist. No, and I love what she said. She said obedience is not legalist. Obedience is not legalist, guys. We cannot be so scared to fall into legalism and religion when what and yet we compromise with the word of God. God's calling us to honor his word. God's calling us to live by his word. This is a just will live by faith. Guys, we are justified by the blood of Jesus and we're called to live by faith. We're called to live by faith. And that's God is calling all of us to if you will answer him. Many of us want to live a comfortable lifestyle. Many of us want to see ministry, you know, compare ourselves. That's one thing even when my mom was speaking to me, she's like, well, your pastor doesn't do this. Joyce Meyer doesn't look like that. This person looks like that. I'm like, I'm not called to be Joyce Meyer. I'm not called to be Priscilla Sire. I'm not called to be my pastor. I'm called to be Nana Ose. And God has a calling upon my life that is unique. And it's calling me to a life laid down. He's calling me to a life completely a dead to myself that Christ may live. So I, I encourage you to say that too as well, that when God has called you as a true disciple, as a true servant, as a true bride, guys, do not compare yourself to others. If you compare yourself to others, you will fall every single time. If your desire, if your desire to be used by God looks like what you think it should look like, it doesn't, it's not supposed to look that way. Compared to the word of God, that's what it's supposed to look like. So if you compare yourself to be some minister, want to be like some preacher, some pastor, guess what? You're looking at the wrong person. The only measure should be Jesus Christ. And that's what I want to look like. I want to look just like Christ did. Christ had no place to lay his head. It said Christ was a, a man acquainted with sorrows. He was a suffering servant. But yet, as believers, we want to be so far away from suffering. We want to be so far away from dying to our flesh. We want to be so far away from the uncomfortable. We want to be so far away from even poverty itself. What does it say in the Word of God that poverty is a curse? It's not a curse. The Word of God says that God has made the poor, the poor of this world, to be rich in faith, guys. Poverty is not a curse. Just like wealth is not being cursed. Maybe we may use that scripture. Oh, you know, um, it would be so difficult to get into the kingdom like um, with, uh, uh, about the rich man. You know, just like going through the eye of the needle. You know, it's so hard for the rich man to get into the kingdom as it would the camel to go through the eye of a needle. So therefore, a lot of people are staying away from wealth. Oh, we don't want the riches. Sometimes too, we don't want to be poor. And both, both sides are extreme. God, when God, if God has called you to wealth, you steward that wealth and you use it for the kingdom. You give it all you got. All the more money you get, you keep pouring it back to the kingdom, pouring it back to the kingdom. And if God has called you to a place of having lack or, or in the eyes of the word poverty, you rejoice in that suffering. You rejoice in that, knowing that you are rich in faith. And so if God has called you to the place of darkness, guys, go, go. 
go. How are we supposed to be the light of the world if we're all around lights? Like, how can a light bulb really shine if there is no, and there's light all around it? The only place the light can shine is when there's darkness. That's how then we know light is in the building. So that's what exactly the believers God has called to. God's called to the most difficult, the most depraved, the most dangerous places, the most darkest places, so he can manifest himself in you. Do not be scared. Do not fear. Because the world, and will men to do Christians, will always come with fear. Fear in the form of caution. Use wisdom. Be careful. No, do not fear. Know that the angels' armies are with you, just as he told Joshua. The Israelites toiled for 40 years, when it's an 11-day journey to go on the promise. And when they finally got there, the Lord sent 10 spies and said, what do you see? Many came back and said, oh, I see giants who are trembling in fear. Giants, is, there's nowhere. We're going to be crushed by them. We're never going to get to the promised land. And the Lord said, because you do exactly what you said, what you confess is exactly what happened. You will never get to the promised land. And many of those died. The only two spies that lived were Joshua and Caleb because they didn't see the, the giants. They saw their giant God, a God who's a God of impossible, who's able to crush these giants who are actually grasshoppers and move mountains. And so God's desire as believers that when we see situations, when we're put in circumstances, when we're called to places of darkness and despair, that we will see the giant God that we serve, the God of impossible. And we see that the kingdom of God is at hand within us, waiting to manifest and be enlightened to that place. So I encourage you to go. To go and trust the Lord when it's crazy. Because God is in the crazy. He's not in the comfortable. So if you're praying right now and you're asking, Lord, what should I do? What can I do for your kingdom? What have you called me to? And, and you really feel in your heart something is so outlandish, so crazy. Go with it. That is Jesus. And that provision has already been made. Guys, this is a season right now. He's calling his bride to do, to go out to all the world, to preach the gospel, to draw many people into his kingdom. He's calling his bride. The time is so short. Do not be those whose lamps are halfway full, who fall asleep, fall asleep in the comfortability of this life, who fall asleep in the complacency, who fall asleep by the praises of men and the favor and opinions of others rather than the favor and opinion of God. Don't be those brides. Rise up, rise up, my brothers and sisters. Rise up, soldiers of God. Rise up, be warring. Be willing to go into territories that nobody will go. Be willing to blaze the way that others may come through because it's never about you. People are attached to your obedience. People are attached to your obedience. So it's never about you. If you're not obedient, then there's many who will fall away and never come to know Jesus Christ because of your lack of obedience. So God is calling us out. And the last frame I want to leave you with, which the Lord spoke to me, confirmed here. As I said, I don't want to be like Abraham. That's exactly what he's called me to. This is He said, he branched out. Jesus did not distribute his message just in his hometown. In fact, he left home rather quickly, recognizing that all too often are prophets without honor in his own country. He took his message, hid the road, going where there was fertile ground. He looked at the whole territory and saw it a field ripe for harvest. He quickly began recruiting workers to help him with his tax. Widen the space of your tent, stretch out your hanging freely, lengthen your ropes, make your tent pegs firm, for you will burst out to the right and to the left, God told Abraham. God does not seem to want leaders to settle for a little piece of land, spiritual or otherwise. The divine constantly urges us to lift up our eyes, to see all the possibilities on the horizon, and to shake off the dust and ashes from our minds and feet and get going. Jesus branched out. So Jesus branched out. Will you branch out? Will you get going? Will you see the territory before you and the possibilities and see the, the field ripe with harvest? Wherever he may take you, go. Go, go into all the world and to preach the gospel, to make disciples of men, and to draw men into his kingdom. Go, go wherever the Lord's taking you. However old you are, you are not too old. Go. If you're 85, you're not too old. Go. 75, you're not too old. Go. You're not too young to 15 year old. If you're 15 year old watching this video, you are not too young. The Lord is speaking to you. You go. You go and be obedient to the will of God and what he's calling you to. And know that he has already made provision. Trust him and you'll be in awe of what God does. That you live a life that will impact eternity, not just history. And that's where we're called to as believers. To be a light, a beacon to all the world. To go in the darkest places and shine the glory and the love of God wherever you go. You will not know what your calling is. You will not know what you're created for. You will not know your purpose. You will not know what to do or where you're sent out to go if you don't have intimacy with the Lord. So I'm telling you, spend time with him daily. 
Spend time with him and listen as he instructs you and go. Go wherever he's asking you to. Go. Go to the crazy. <laughs> and go on this crazy adventure with the love of our soul, Jesus Christ. And let's pray for me in this time this week that I pray that I'll hear from the Lord as to specifically where he wants to, where he has called me to and where he wants me to live. So I love to pray just um, a, a spirit of boldness and courage upon you guys just to go to go where the Lord's taking you. Father, I just thank you so much for such a privilege and honor, God, to serving this man. God, I pray for my brethren. I pray for everyone watching this video. God, I pray for a holy unction right now in the spirit of those watching this, Lord. I pray, Father God, where there's been doubt, I command it no more. Where there's been fear, I command you no more in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that spirits, God, and hearts begin to rise to this message. To rise up, O oh Lord God, and begin to manifest Christ wherever they go. God, I pray that my brethren, God, will rise up. Your sons and daughters will rise up, O oh Lord God. Be a Father God, adhering, Father God, to where you want them to go. To step out in faith, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for a spirit of boldness and courage to fall upon them, Lord God. Do not care, Father God, for the opinions of men. Do not care, Father God, for the praise of men. Do not care, Father God, for the opinions of their family, Lord God, but they'll trust in you, Jesus. They'll yield and submit themselves to you, to be obedient to whatever you call them to, Father God. They'll go into all the world, Father God, and preach your gospel, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I pray, Father God, that you awaken, Father God, youth in the hearts of the old. You awaken, oh, Father God, dreams, Lord God, and visions, Lord God. God, you make directions plain, Father God, before them in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Where lies have creeped in, Father God, that they're not worthy. Where lies have creeped in, Father God, that they're too old. Where lies have creeped in, Father God, that they're too young to be used by you, Father God. Where lies have creeped in, oh, Lord God, that they have nothing to offer. God, I pray that they'll give you their nothing, Father God, that they can, you can become everything in them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I pray that doubt would be gone in the name of Jesus. Guilt would be gone in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you begin you begin to do a mighty work in the hearts of your sons and daughters, Lord God. I pray that those who rise up, Lord God, and blaze away, Father God. Father God, a new tear to a new crown. I think your word says, oh, Father God, that the kingdom of God has suffered violence, and violence take it by force. I think your warriors will rise up, oh, Lord God, and take territory, Father God, from the kingdom of hell by force in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, we'll take back territory, Father God. We'll, ta we'll take back the souls that have been lost in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Father God, we'll do all that you ask us to do as we yield ourselves to you, Father. And we say yes. Yes to your will, Father God. That every day we wake up, God, we choose you and not our flesh. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And I thank you for this promised land. I thank you, Father God, for this new territory, Father God, you call us to settle into, Father God. And I pray, Father God, we'll take your hand, Father God, hand in hand with you, conquering, Father God, each soul one at a time with your love, Lord God, and the motive of your love, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. I God bless you guys. Love you guys. Be blessed.